Uh, you know, you, just, you ever just have those nights where you're sort of fishing to catch a sort of mystical vibe? I was on that one tonight, and I was uh, didn't want to go to bed. It's midnight. Good morning, Hesse. It's morning over there. It's midnight for me. So I decided to come hang out with you guys and do some do some digging. So here we are digging. Digging through <laughs> digging through Hollow Earth. One of my favorites. Then you guys ever heard about the Nagas? I've been just I've been I've been revisiting the Hollow Worth stuff. I, re, I try to revisit. It's my, it was it was my gateway drug. Hollow Worth was my gateway drug back in like 2011. It's all things spooks and supernatural. I feel like every couple of years something new pops up. The Nagas. I want to read to you guys the, the Nagas, which are a race of people who are under the Buddhist temple. And then we'll just chit chat. Just enjoy each other's company. Know what I mean? Too sweet. Hello, goddess life. What's cracking? Slimio. Good evening. Let's check this out. The Nagas. So in India, apparently, there's this ancient belief um, in a subterranean race of serpents who dwell in the cities Patala and Bhogavati. According to legend, according to legend, they wage war on the kingdom of Agartha. The Nagas, according to William Michael Motts, the Deep Dwellers, should read that book, are a very advanced race of species with a highly developed technology. And they also harbor a disdain for human beings who they are said to abduct, torture, interbreed with, and even to eat. Forty steps which descend into a circular depression terminate at a closed stone door which is covered in relief cobras. In Tibet, there is a major mystical shrine also called Patala, which is said by the people there to sit atop an ancient cavern and tunnel system, which reaches throughout the Asian continent and possibly beyond. The Nagas also have an affinity with water, and the entrances to their underground palaces are often said to be hidden at the bottom of wells, deep lakes, and rivers. What up, Ricardo? Ricardo asks a good question if they would be in the same dimension. You know, when I'm doing the hollow worth stuff, I don't come across too much material talking about how it's different dimensions. Um, there's tons of races. Some are seven to eight feet tall. Some are 13 feet tall. Some are blue. Some glow green. Some claim to be the direct descendants of Noah. Um, I guess it all, it all, it all just sort of depends uh, what lens you're trying to go through. Uh, what do you think? What do you guys think? Do you think they're, if, if Hollow Earth were a thing, do you think they'd be in the same dimension as us? Same dimension? Different dimension. I'm saying same, or I, I'm saying both, but definitely at least same. Check it out. We have the next people who dwell in Hollow Earth, according to legend. They're called the Old Ones. In an article for Atlantis Rising entitled The Hollow Earth Myth or Reality, Brad Steiger writes of the legends of the Old Ones, an ancient race that populated the surface world millions of years ago and then moved underground. Immensely intelligent and scientifically advanced. Uh, have chosen to structure their own environments under the surface of the planet and manufacture all their necessities. The old ones are hominid, extremely long-lived, and predate Homo sapiens by more than a million years. 
The old ones generally remain aloof from the surface peoples, but from time to time they've been known to offer constructive criticism, and it has been said that they often kidnap human children to tutor and rear as their own. It's crazy. I can't say if they would be in the same, but I can imagine same. What do you mean, Ock of Stone? Uh, who's claiming the million years? That's crazy. I don't think it's that crazy, Ock of Stone. I mean, a million years isn't that long. Except there's there's some things. Hold on. There's what are these? I, I got to do some brushing up with my forbidden technology, but they found these iron iron spheres inside of uh, layers of strata millions of years old. Iron, pure iron doesn't exist in nature. It must be mined, smelted, and then molded in, and then cast into a shape. Um, there's hammers lodged inside of wood. It looks like it are lodged inside of stone. It looked like the hammer had been there for so long that the stone grew around it, which is another demonstration of millions of years. Um, there's a, there's a, there, uh, there was another one where there were bipedal footsteps that followed tracks of dinosaurs into the side of mountains. There's a bunch of shit. I wish I could find it for you guys. Hold on. Um, where are we at? Ah, oh, bummer. It's gonna take. It's. It's. You guys are gonna have to trust me. Maybe I'll, I'll do my favorite anomalies that exist. Um. I mean, I'm with you on mainstream conclusions on history, but I'm not with you on thinking that it's crazy that humans have been around for millions of years, or at least intelligent creatures. I mean, the dinosaurs were around hundreds of millions of years ago. You think about the monkey, you think about the dinosaur, I think like a like a velociraptor or something. Both creatures are one are one left turn away from being crazy crazy intelligent. They're they're both an opposable thumb away from leaps in advancement. So could you imagine if the reptile caught you know, intelligence? And it had hundreds of millions of years to develop. You know, they talk about the Cretaceous period and the Jurassic period and the Triassic period. Those things spanned hundreds of millions of years. And all, and and somehow only in the past 10, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 years or so, we've had intelligent entities. Like, get the fuck out of here. There's no way. And so when I hear people say humans were around a million years ago, intelligent humans, you know, building cities a million years ago, it's like, oh, that wasn't that long ago. Not as far as the earth is concerned and the complexity of the inhabitants of the earth is concerned. You feel, you feel me? How does how does one prove millions of years? Because they're not using carbon aqua stone. They're, they literally found footprints in stone, Foss, fossilized footprints in stone. Um, they found iron. They found iron spheres, pure iron spheres in layers of rock that are millions of years old. Like it does. You don't. Carbon dating is not the only way to date material right like there's there's other ways you can you can in other words you just dig down super deep and you go further in time by the further you deep more or less 
Um, so it's, I got to find it. If someone can find it for me, because I can't necessarily talk and research at the same time, if you know what I mean. Um, do you believe in dinosaurs? Well, based off of what you just said, Ock of Stone, I can imagine your response would be, unless you've ever seen a dinosaur, they don't exist. Um, and if that's the conversation we're having, I, I'll just churn... I'll just turn the live off right now <laughs> because I've never met you before. So how do I know you exist? I've never met any of you bastards before. So how, how do I know that I'm not talking to myself fight club style? If that's the sort of tree we're going to be barking up. Um, I try to use a healthy blend of both my gut intuition feeling and my logic and reasoning and my ability to sort of cross reference all the material that I take in to, to give myself a general idea of what's real and what isn't. Um, are dinosaurs real? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I guess not. Do I believe in them? I mean, I, if, 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 if to, if to know something exists, then you have to see, touch, taste, feel, see it firsthand experience. I mean, then I, then I don't believe in anything really, except, except, you know what I mean? Tom Smith, hollow earth, like the 900 mile long tunnel that goes along South and Central America. Yeah. Tom Smith. That's exactly what we're talking about. Odyssey. Uh, cool. Ecstasy. Um, I asked my Ouija board how old I was. Damn, you're over there. What? I'm trying to keep up with you guys' comments. We've got some healthy debates going on. Um, biracial witch, what's up? Well met, Ricardo. Fossil fuels are not only about dinosaurs. Yes, anything that is carbon turns into a fossil fuel. Um, all plants and animals to ever exist, period. Who answers you from your Ouija board? Yeah, good question. Um, um, I'm just saying be open to all sides, before believing for sure but if but if what's the what's the other side of dinosaurs existing i can't imagine the other side being being stronger of a case than dinosaurs you know what i mean i feel the tree that you're barking up both sides are equally discredited by your original statement, which is how do you know for sure they exist? Just because people say they exist doesn't mean just because people believe something is a certain way doesn't mean it is. And by that logic, you'd have to throw everything out. And I don't know if I'm willing to throw everything out. I'll throw a lot out. Don't get me wrong. I'm tossing shit out the window all the goddamn time from, <laughs> from what the majority of people believe in whether it's spirituality, new age, shamanism, paganism, politics, public school system, what the dude eating the bell, the Del Taco burrito at the bus stop, trying to, trying to spark up a conversation with me, whatever it is. Like I'm tossing out a lot of shit. Don't get me wrong. I feel you on that. I do. Um, but how I, a good, a good, um, starting place for me personally keith garcia is is if the mainstream is pushing it i'll doubt it <laughs> and if the mainstream tries to bury it and doesn't talk about it i'm interested like the footsteps the bipedal footsteps that that are in stone million plus year old stone not carbon stone that follow what appear to be large reptile tracks that we call dinosaurs, call them whatever you want to call them, but there's bipedal human footprints 
fossilized in stone and the footprints disappear into a mountain because crustal uplift has pushed the mountain up to where the, the feet disappear into the mountain. You guys have any idea how long it takes for the mountain to, to push out of the earth? Like we're talking, that's what I mean, whether like this is million, these footprints are millions of years old by bipedal upright walking humans upwards of at least 65 million years. And there were no, according to me, there was, there was no fucking upright walking hominids 65 plus million years ago. Um, yeah. These, com- I mean, the, 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 and that's why I don't, I, 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 I don't like conversations like that because then it's like, what's the point of having a conversation in the first place? If, if, if you're sort of like, what's our anchor, I guess, is my question. What would our, what would our anchor be? Like what, what are we allowing to accept as truth and what are we not? You know what I mean? Cause I could think um, Graham Hancock was the one who I got the in from. You guys probably know Graham Hancock. He did the, um, um, I can't remember. Something of the gods, food of the gods, fingerprints of the fingerprint of oh, gods with amnesia. That's what uh, Graham Hancock did, and he just goes balls deep on alternative history. Um, sort of doing his direct experience and direct studies, and making his own conclusions off of off of what we've been studying. Let's see if I could fix this but he's the one that i got the information on the footprints on those spheres on a, it's a straight up hammer it's a piece of wood with a cast iron or cast copper i think it's cast iron um head over the top of the wood it's a it's a axe and it's it's in stone. It's like sword in the stone. It's axe ends with stone that's formed around it. Like that's how fucking old this thing. And again, millions of years. So, hey, I'm down for alternate history by all means. Does it matter? Hell yeah, it matters if the dinosaurs are, if the dinosaurs are fake. Oh man. Without dinosaurs, there's no proof of one kind of species turning into another kind of species. Did you throw the Bible out? (laughs) Only proof of adaption. There are a lot more sacred texts besides the Bible read up. Talking to me? What if dinosaurs aren't what we believe them to be? What were they really? If they aren't real, then it shows there was a lie. Then why did they lie? They just provide intelligence. That right? But get in case. Um, what about the giant bones found? Comment. Bollocks, DJ Sound Barrier. Thank you for summer for summarizing all that's in my head. Bollocks. <laughs> Bollocks. Um. Uh, hold on, time out, Occupstone. Adapt or adaption and evolution not the same thing. Because we've hybridized plants like crazy um, in, ju- in just a couple hundred years. Or, or think wolves and dogs. We've taken we've taken the uh, a gray wolf, this this massive killing machine, and breeded it down to a chihuahua. Adaption, yes. Um, are you saying you can't leap to, to another species? Like a dog can never become a cat? Or I don't know. there's a lot of holes in evolution. I did, I did some some deep diving when I was looking up uh, Bigfoot. I was on a Bigfoot kick for a while, and this guy was saying. There's gaps in human DNA where human evolution was uh, 
clear evidence of tampering in the genetic makeup of humans. Like we could not, our brains could not have grown as fast. There's too many gaps from Homo erectus to um, Homo sapien came after erectus, right? Or Neanderthal, is, we didn't come from Neanderthal, they're a different branch according to this train of thought. But there's holes. The junk DNA. That you see, there's a bunch of shit showing that. See, I believe in evolution, but I don't believe evolution is how they say it's been. That's where I'm at with evolution. I, you know what I mean? That's just curious. What you think, Ock? Are you saying that the planet has been uh, all life on the planet has been? Created with intelligent design by, by like a god with a capital G or with a lowercase g. Um, yeah, curious. Curious. Can you explain what Ja is? No. I'm not Rastafari. I have dreadlocks, but I am not Rastafari. I mean, Ja is god. No, I can't explain. I can't go deeper than that. What up, Sarah? Uh, no, all fossils in museums are plaster. Uh, yeah, they are. <laughs> What about our cells' ability to genetically... What up, Lucid Earth? Um, for sure, I mean, I... I mean, I... I life, life seems to be able to change at will, though will manifest different in different animals like i believe that plants possess a certain kind of desire um genetically speaking like you if you put a time lapse on a plant on a sunflower this the flower follows the sun to the entire sky so there is there is a there is a desire to some degree in a plant to make it go face towards the sun um and i believe that that's how evolution happens on on a lower conscious level. But there's just sort of basic desires and needs that, or and let's say over the course of the next 10,000 years, temperature starts to dwindle. It gives plants enough time to have a desire to sur survive, which would influence the genes. And you would call it random science would call it random genetic mutation but i i mean i don't have any proof to back this up but i think that like i said that these plants have desires um and they're able to manipulate their genes in order to get those desires met in their offspring further down the line and eventually you have a, a species that's able to tolerate low ph levels or high ph levels um, but apparently dinosaurs aren't real. That's what Ock of Stone is getting at, right, Ock? Right? Dinosaurs ain't real. I'll tune into that. I'll tune into that. Backwards. <laughs> Why don't eyebrows keep growing? Yeah, but when you say intelligent design, like evolution can be intelligent design too. So I don't understand how I don't understand how 
intelligent design is is any more useful than saying evolution you know i mean like the intelligence that you're talking about that's designing things could have designed evolution could have been like hey i'm going to design a world that can run itself i'm going to i'm going to hit the on button and it's going to create itself it's going to evolve it's going to find new ways to experience its surroundings it's going to find new ways of sensing its surroundings and i'm going to have an, an infinite amount of universes and they're all going to some are going to go left while others go right some are going to go down some are going to evolve to 60 some are going to make it past 2d i don't know because i'm creating the big we'll say the big bang we'll say i'm creating the original thought that sort of bursts things into existence and then by by intelligent design from there evolution will do its thing and i'll be able to sort of be surprised you know what i mean like imagine if you have all the power ever like it would be boring right because everything would be predictable because you're creating things but eventually you'd want to create something that would surprise you and the only way something could surprise you is if it was acting of its own volition to a degree i mean it comes from you so it can't act completely out of you but it can surprise you in that you have an infinite amount of parallel realities and they're all sort of doing their own thing. Like I, I, I see evolution fitting perfectly in a paradigm such as intelligent design. You know what I mean? I don't lose sleep over down with theories. So I don't lose sleep over anything. I sleep like a babes all the time, every time. I'm a sleep master. Evolution suggests that things are brilliant and intelligent just because of an explosion of nothingness. Intelligent design is the human body and nature. Is the human body and nature and evident? Evolution suggests that things just are brilliant and intelligent. I don't know if evolution suggests that exactly. The Higgs boson particle. I haven't had time to really to really dive into that one, but you're gonna have to let we're gonna have to pull that up. I've come across it a couple of times, but I'm not a quantum physicist by any means. Evolution is based on an explosion of two parts of nothingness. Evolution is our DNA being affected by our current surroundings and our experiences. Those things create different beings that take on certain attributes. Think Pokemon, gotta catch them all. You know it's our destiny, Pokemon. Oh, you're my best friend. In a world we must defend. Pokemon, gotta catch them all, Pokemon. How does the double slit experiment work alongside Big Bang Theory? I don't know, Ark of Stone, how does it? It is. Alchemy, are you up right now? I'll, I'll get to the next Hollow Earth uh, entities right now. <laughs> Jiggly puff, jiggly. So my bad, I didn't answer your question on the on the 
double slit. How does it? You know, speaking of the double slit, I was reading the double slit theory, and we all saw the double slit theory from what the bleep do we know? And on a couple different accounts, they're like, hey, you guys need to stop talking about the double slit theory because none of you guys know what the hell you're talking about. It's not at all what the pseudoscience has made it out to be. And I read it and that shit was hella confusing, so I can't repeat it to you. But just know that if you guys are basing double slit theory on your um, conclusions of the world, like I have been, you're probably using it wrong. Just, throw, just throwing that one out there. It's, re- it's really, it's really... <laughs> Not as simple as people make it out to seem. Um, oh no, your questions are fine. Ock of Stone. All right, hold on. I have something. Hey, alchemy, you know what to do. Particles acting like waves. Yeah, the split theory, if you guys don't know, I'll try to give you a shakedown of it. Uh, there was, it's been a while. They were shooting photons through these, through a slit. Through the slit that you- In conclusion, if I may chalk it up to just this, when scientists were observing um, these particles, they were solid. They were particles. And when they weren't observing them, observing them, they were acting like waves. So in other words, they were they were potential when they weren't being observed. And when they were being observed, they collapsed from potential into actual physical things, into particles. Um, they were shooting it through this slit and they were like, all right, it should on the other side of the slit show a perfect two slits, two little lines because you're shooting particles through. But on the other side, it showed like a whole, there was, I don't know, there was a whole shit ton of slits because it was acting like a wave, like an ocean wave would hit two slits. It would make more waves on the other side of it, not just two waves on the other side. So they were going, oh shit, if we look at the part of, if we look at the experiment, it collapses the results. If we don't look, so the, the observer was changing reality. Um, but that, but I'm not sure how in the world you tied those, or, or how it's relevant to tie both of those together, Ock of Stone. Like, like how does that, how does that tie in with the Big Bang? I wasn't sure what you were getting at. It exists at all points simultaneously. And don't get the vac. <laughs> Jahan Murdoch, yes, it, it does prove that, yeah, in a, in a way, yeah. Um, yes, question everything, 100%. 100%. I don't know how the how this double slit negates Big Bang, though. That's what that, I guess that's the connection I'm not, I'm not able to make. <laughs> Sarah, all right, I'm going to read, um... Yeah, I got. I personally have no problem believing in the Big Bang theory. I have like zero problem believing in, or at least something like the Big Bang. Because when, when you look out in nature, things tend 
to have a rhythm to them. Like what goes up must come down, night and day, light and dark, expansion, contraction. Like all like all things are possible. So it would make sense that the universe would be something that could expand and contract. Especially if we're talking fucking different levels of dimensions that quantum science is figuring out. Like, okay, maybe it's just a, maybe we're our big bang is in one tiny dimension of something bigger that it's not capable of collapsing or, or expanding. I don't know. I know shit's weird. Who created Islam? Nah, I can't do it. I can't. Islam's a little too extreme. I can't say I enjoy any form of of religion. <laughs> to say that that is the religion and all everyone else will die and burn in hell. Joda, what up, man? Welcome. What is up? Hey, we got we got someone on the live here, you guys. Oh. You get a haircut? Yeah. What up? <laughs> oh shit! I was up doing some, uh, cause it's almost like three a.m. here. I was just up doing some Etsy stuff. Oh, nice. Before I get behind, you know how that is. But uh, so you talk? We're talking about dinosaurs tonight. We kind of we're talking about kind of shit. El Gonzalo oh. wants to know why Islam is extreme. I call it I call Islam and all the religions extreme, you guys, yeah. because they all say ours is the way, and if you don't follow us, then you're going to hell, and that seems a bit extreme to me. It does, man. It it's seems like a bit, and to be fair, to be fair, not that the teachings there's anything bad against the teachings particularly, but when they're like, "Yo, my way or the highway," then it's like. Not even the highway. It's my way or hell. That yeah, that seems a bit extreme. <laughs> it's a method. It's like a method of control, really. That's what well, like religion kind of started off as like. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's it a method of control, off as control. a way to control a population. Do you think it started that way, or do you think it was? It was. It, they saw the possibility of well, that. I mean, like it became perverted. You know what I mean? Well, if you take the. Oh, my internet. Uh, is everything good on your end? Okay. Uh, I'm good. My my stream okay. is good. It's your internet, but the archons are on to you. No, they're good. Like, how you dare know. you talk about religion? <laughs> uh, like, religion is different than the spiritual text that governs it. So the Bible yeah. is, is different than Christianity. So religion, if you look up, if you look up the term religion, it means restriction. That is Saturnarian energy, you know, control, all of that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Ro Rome, the Black Romans, before you know the other Romans came in, um, you used the Black that. Romans. Yeah. All right, carry on. Now, basically, history was inverted for a reason. So, like, the Greeks were black before then, before the Greeks that we know came in. Like, all of those civilizations were actually more dominantly i would say uh you melanated just because we controlled those lands and they're like the later day Kemites or egyptians or you know in that area they might we migrated all over and we utilized religion or restriction as a way to govern our people because the church was like the first form of politics uh -huh. but the spiritual text was a bit different it's like you have uh, the first form of uh, religion was Gnosticism, you know, the Gnostic texts. So you take, they took the Gnostics, the, those Romans took the Gnostics, yeah, took their priests, killed the rest of their people, took their priests, and, you know, built a religion because they were losing control over their own people. Their own people were starting to think for themselves. Where you, you know, get what? Where are you getting this information from? Uh, you just gotta look up history. You gotta look up the history of the Romans. Yeah, but do you, do you have a specific book? I'm trying not to if I could search six hours to find this. Information. Uh, do you have yeah. a specific book or a speaker uh, or like uh, Bobby Hemmett, uh, Phil Valentine. Got uh, it. There's no like specific book where you can read like this shit. Uh, 
Well, if you watch their lectures on, I'll have to pull up some lectures, but they drop book references all the yeah, time. Yeah, if you could get that, that's something. Because I try to find, it's hard to find alternate history stuff that's like concise, you know? I ended yeah. up digging for 15 And I, I have a good friend of mine who's putting me onto the history aspect because when uh, there's uh, the there's people, you know, there are great historians that know the true history or the two, true her story or his story. Uh-huh. There, there are those of us who are really good with spirituality and they both sides tend to lack the other side so it's like uh, what we need to do is have a mesh of both you know both of those things so I'm trying to get more into the history aspect of it versus my favorite know, part the, the history aspect then, tends to be my favorite part when it comes to once you take once you take the history aspect back to spirituality you start to make more connections and get more channels and different things like that and yeah. you know, and the same thing for like when you have the um, the spiritual aspect, and you take your experiences and what you know about spirituality, and then you're getting the history. Like, okay, that makes more sense. You can easily make connect, like again, make more connections a little bit quicker. So yeah, it's like uh, uh, I'll I'll try and pull up some stuff and see if I can get some other references. But like, I learned the other day that Abraham Lincoln wasn't white. What? Yeah. And uh, my friend, he's a Moor, M O O R. Uh-huh. And more, it's more science and more history. We got to get more into that because that is where a lot of this shit comes from. Like, yeah. When you look down to yeah. It, there's a lot of stuff in the Moors. Um, like the Moors were the early were the early day Egyptians. So a lot of their things, a lot of their history, a lot of things we do today come from them like they taught um they taught the early the, the early day um phenol melanated or white people like they basically taught them culture um they taught them how to bathe they taught them all like a whole bunch of shit <laughs> and, yeah, and then what happened is you have these you have a sector of the moors which is now just a bloodline who kind of defected and they used that the information for nefarious purposes so what they did was they the basically what we call the elites now like the Rothschilds and all that quote mm-hmm. unquote um their ancestors were put in power by these people basically you know and right now what they do is they call themselves archons and to be able to figure out where they are in history you have to find out what group calls themselves the Archons. It's not, it's almost like a game. And there's only one group out right now that identifies as Archons, like outright. Mm-hmm. And they, came, they came out in 1904. If you look up um, Boule, uh, Boule Society, you will find out a lot of shit. Like, Brother Steve Coakley has a lot of lectures on them. He was the first one to expose them and the, these Boule members, they call themselves Archons. And they have they have a lot of history, like a part of a part of their history is knowing like um the out of you you've heard of the out of Africa theory? Yeah. Crock of bullshit. It, that doesn't see yeah, that doesn't it doesn't it's, it's it's basically what the the Africans that came over here on ships, they came over here to invade America, not to be enslaved. They came here, invaded America, and then became enslaved. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, what was it? Who was the tribe? We left with this fucking like three hundred ships and never came back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like how could you? How could uh, the European, who at the time didn't even come into power until 1900 literally um they're they're like scapegoats for other things that are other powers that are out there for a reason it's like we we call them the hidden hand like if i were to put it if i were to write like a really diabolical screenplay about this situation which i probably might might do it in some point being a writer um it may it would make more sense you know in format of a book you'd be able to see how it happened plot plot by plot, there's always this hidden hand in the background that, you know, they're out there until they don't want to be seen anymore. When they don't want to be seen anymore, they need a scapegoat. They need somebody to take the fall. 
Uh huh. So who takes the fall in modern day society right now? I mean, you can only think it's easy to think about. Who do we blame everything on? Like, you know, when when we wake up, you know, a plethora of all the elites or uh-huh. the, you know these these cults that uh-huh. we know about. They they take the fall for the people that put them in power. You know, it's like a bloodline thing. Which is why if you look up um, all these cults, they have bloodlines, they have, you know, you have to be a certain, there are certain people that earn their way in and they build their family and then they, you know, build an industry and then they're in the thing. And then there are certain people who they call fake, uh, who I call fake royalty. Um, they are born in it, born in it through direct uh, bloodline. They didn't have to earn in, in the present day earn their way in, so that would be like uh, the Queen of England and their and those other families over there. They've been in, they've been in this shit for a long time. African conquistadors. Uh... That's a part. That's what I'm learning in history because it goes hand in hand with the with spirituality, quantum physics, you know, everything that we question or know today. And it's all tied in, you know, the history. That's why I guess uh, back to the the Quran and the Islam thing. That's one of the things that it, it's it's not the same thing wrong with these religions. They just seem so small, man. Like they seem like yeah. there's a huge picture. Like there's a fucking mountain of information and knowledge out there from millions of different cultures and to just say like islam is the way judaism or or any of the abrahamic religions or paganism or the 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 shamans in fucking the weechol shamans in mexico like for any one group to be like we have all the answers is almost like bullshit (laughs) i mean no one knows what the fuck's going on not really everyone has a piece of puzzle yeah that's what it is one giant puzzle everybody has a piece that's why in the their spiritual texts in those religions have some truth to it but they also sure 100 percent. they also have the lie so that it'll keep you know those people who are invested in those religions you know under it'll keep them pushing their energy out like giving it away you know yeah, yeah, and I always say the the best lie has has a piece of truth inside of it. Um, so is that what you're, is that how you feel personally? Yeah. You feel yeah. about religious texts? Is that there's lie in it, or do you think? Because I know some people like a shearer is like it's all code. You can't see good or bad. You just have to get the information as code and decide. Well, are you seeing well, code? Are you seeing there, there's a multitude of things. There's code in it. You know, there's truth. So what they do is they encode it with truth and lie. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they mix all those things together. So when you can decode, you can scrap away the, you know, the the dense, the denser parts, or what we call the unnecessary or the lie as well. And you can take away what you need, you know, what the truth actually is. So it's having to sift through the shit to find the gold. You, it's like it's like that. You you follow the Sumerian. The Sumerian texts, right? Do you do you take stock in in the Sumerian creation theory and and us being here to to mine gold, etc.? Do you follow? Um, I believe that was a form of metaphor, you know, gold. But um, to a degree, there's some truth in that as well. I I believe what it's more of an inverted, you know, you have to see, you know, what is the gold because. Maybe on a physical level, yeah, gold, but it's really more like mining souls. Damn. Is what these is what these entities are doing is they're trapping souls and making them re- reincarnate, so they can keep using keep eating off of that soul force. But if you, if that soul wakes up enough and knows you know, and knows its path, knows what it needs to do, knows where it, where it needs to go. Or desires to go, then it can be, you know, free itself, you know, liberation, liber. You know, it's almost like if uh, uh, enough um, enough people who are adept were to come together in unity, the masses would probably follow because mm-hmm. they're followers. 
-hmm. and then the whole system here around the world especially America would crumble so you have to kind of so they have what they did was they created a way to trap souls you know it's, that's part of the Anunnaki creation theory and you know how they that's why they tried to dumb down the bloodline keep us subservient to them but then you have you know in you have Enki and Lil fighting and one of them was like no I think we should give them a little bit of something so they can evolve because they're supposed to surpass us what is it what is it what does a free space look like to you in your own personal paradigm of how shit goes down you have trap souls or sick so say now your soul is no longer trapped where are you um are you in another so dimension? Are you like with the people who are trapping your souls and now you see them face to face in another realm? Like, hey, you fucked, you trapped me on Earth, but like now we're on the same level. Like how how does how is that unfolding for you? So that unfolds for me in a way of receiving receiving more knowledge and wisdom, um, being able to teach, you know, as I as I'm learning and not per se trying to save people, but teaching people True liberation is knowing how to save yourself. So can and, you be on planet Earth and not have your soul trapped? Yeah. Def right. most, def most definitely, yeah. There's plenty of us here that have, you know, our, our souls aren't trapped. Not everybody has a soul, but that's a whole different thing. You, you mean thing. literally, right? You're not speaking metaphorically soul trapped. You're talking like when you die, your soul gets recycled down to Earth. Type it of gets recycled type of shit yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Right. You know, um, so it, it's like your soul harbors the records of everything the soul the soul essence and the soul force is what creates everything and what we draw everything from as well so these archons cannot use they don't have souls not anymore they used to but they don't anymore because they they fucked around and um, I don't have the whole story on that, but I'm getting it. I know what uh, I'm being taught. One of um, by a great uh, by a great woman, and she's writing a book on it. So when it comes out, I will definitely probably have more information on that. But from what I do know and can understand is, you know, the trapping of souls is definitely real, which is you know what re what many things like religion is going to do is going to restrict you. To, you're not going to look outside, you know, the, think outside the box. You're not going to figure certain things out. If they can trap you like that, then they can trap you here on the inside. Mm -hmm. And you basically don't tap into the records of who you are, you know, like the Akashic records, knowing thyself. You're only reading that one book, you know, that type of thing. Uh -huh. and then your soul, basically, it doesn't shut down. But it shuts down, you know, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. in like a in a, like a a way of you don't tap into a certain level of consciousness. Yeah, dude, I was just talking to my mom about some yesterday, and she goes, "Oh my god, I was talking to this neuroscientist." I, well, she saw her doctor. It's like your brain starts shutting parts of itself off if you don't use it to conserve energy. It's like, well, I'm only going to put energy into the mechanisms that are being used. So people like people's brains shut down if you don't use it. If you're not reading, if you're not staying mentally simulated, your brain just fuck. So it makes exactly. sense that every part of your being is going to react in the same way. Exactly. And basically what happens is on that end is your brain will shut down. Ricardo, I'm getting to that. My bad. Go ahead. Your brain will shut down. And it'll go into like, uh, it'll go into like a theta state to where it can be programmed. So it'll go into more, you'll be more susceptible to the theta state, the mm -hmm. programming state, and then mm -hmm. you will be given mental stimulation. So your That's brain. That's not will, a bad thing though, to be more, to get yourself with though, because you just want to make sure that you're programming yourself with good shit. Yes. But uh, where I'm going with it is, you get programmed by society, you know, uh, uh, you know, school, you know, you know, all the usual bullshit. You know how they put, uh, you know, weird things in the movies and entertainment. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So then you get programmed by the bullshit, and that bullshit will in turn mentally stimulate you in a way where your brain 
will come back online and it will live to be stimulated by those things until you say otherwise. So it'll shut down and then come back online with a new program. A reboot with the new yeah. update. <laughs> it's almost it like... require system and must be turned off for update to complete. <laughs> that, that is the easiest way to clone somebody. It doesn't necessarily have to be where you grow a body, you, uh -huh. grow, you grow skin. You can easily clone somebody through ideology. Through mind, mind control is a way to clone somebody. Mentally cloning somebody with... It's almost like, you know, like that scene in Harry Potter, I forgot which movie, where Dumbledore is pulling the memories out of his head. Yeah. So uh, imagine somebody like these people that are programming you pulling things, pulling all the things out of your head, wiping it clean, and then putting in their ideology what they want you to, you know, perceive so that your existence will benefit them and their power. And that is a way to clone people through the mind, through the brain. What does afterlife look like to you? Afterlife? I haven't really thought about that as much, but... Well, in reference to the soul being trapped. So say your soul's no longer trapped, you've broken free, you die. Oh, well, basically, then afterlife would be exploring all the universe has to offer. You know, by incarnating on another planet, by traveling yeah. astrally, by yeah, Ast you know, like astrally traveling, you know, with your soul and everything. To you can do that now. Different places, and yeah, you can do that now. But uh, you know, you can do that on that end as well. You know, going to, you know, building your own universe based upon what you learned here. That type of shit, you know. Oh, uh, God into. mode. One of the, well, I want to build my own little my own little haven, kind of like you know if if think about it like this if a simulation can be built here, what mm -hmm. can we what can we do if when we learn how to harbor those those type of skills those architect type of skills but also using the heart chakra, you know compassion love you know unconditional mm -hmm. love and compassion mm -hmm. to build your own place. Mm -hmm. If they can do it, you can do it, and I guess sure one hundred percent. That's one of the many points here. Like some people incarnated here so that they could learn how to build their own earth or their own universe or their own galaxy. Dude, I'm working on it. You know, that and so that's why certain people they they consciously reincarnate, like Thoth talks about in the Emerald Tablets how to take your consciousness with you. Yeah. You know, and also it like specifically it's when you when you die. Mm-hmm. You have what's the thought? You have to have a certain thought, or you vibrate, or something like that. Something like that. I have to get back on the Emerald Tablets. I think it's time to read them again. I was but, gonna read that tonight, dude. I was like, should I read some tablets? Should I do some <laughs> Earth? Like, what should I? I was like trying to dip into some some occulty shit. Some. And he talks about how to like when you reincarnate back back in this motherfucker, how to take your consciousness with you. So it. So you aren't starting fresh. You're not starting over every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how he was able to, you know, do what he does because he's not starting fresh. He's so, so he has all these lifetimes. This entity has all these lifetimes worth of knowledge, information, and wisdom because it knows how to take its it take its consciousness with it and build upon it. For a certain purpose, whatever that purpose may be. Dude, I got some Thoth candle holders <laughs> on the way as we speak. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's it's you know, there's a lot. It's like there's what I'm saying now is everything is perspective. Like I don't argue with people anymore. Well, I'm trying not to <laughs> because you know. It's all perspective. It's like, I'm right, you're right, you're wrong, I'm wrong, because think about it like this. What do this. you see happening in the future, man? We got a bunch of weird shit going on right now. I'm oh. like, I'm like not, <laughs> I'm like not stoked, but I'm not upset. I'm in that weird place of excitement when you know dramas, but like, you know, the, the fight breaks out and you're just like, yeah. damn, but you're like intrigued. I'm in that spot right now. There's a lot of spiritual shit going on right now. <laughs> And there's like a, a, a spiritual war going on 
and a lot of people, even in the spiritual community, they're just kind of like, st- you know, on standby. They're not knowing what to do. Kind of on standby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I will, what I would say is this is the time to, you know, learn learn about um, living off the grid, but not necessarily having to go there, you know, you know, live, you know, the survival type of thing. Not because I think that we're going there. It's just like. No, but yeah, I bought some books. I haven't read them yet, but they got some good you know, bushwhacking, living off the land. I have uh, edible plants of Southern California, you know, poisonous and edible. You know what I mean? You know, you know knowing that type of knowledge is very going gonna to be very, very relevant due to the fact that you might want to kind of like live in between like the city and the uh, and uh, off the grid kind of in that area with doing your own thing, but still keeping up to date with shit. Yeah. Because you know, shit's kind of like hitting the fan right now. It's like, basically, we have we have a huge spiritual war going on, and it's calling certain people to you know raise their frequency because yeah. you might need you might play a part in helping. You might play a part in the ascension. You know, it's calling people to go into their higher state you know go from being a more like a mere mortal to something higher than that whatever that is to you you know i i get this fucking urge man i get this calling because everyone's like they want to get up or they want to go back to their star they want to do their thing the earth sucks it blows this and that it's trapped trapped souls it's prison for all the other entities and i'm like i'm trying to take earth and turn it into eden man like yeah exactly jungle the sahara desert you know what i'm saying like that's where my head is at exactly that is because earth isn't as fucked up as they as we're told you know it's not as fucked up as we're told but you know at the same time it has its it has its quirks but for sure, yeah. it's got it some healthy ass quirks, dude. For sure, it's healthy, heavy ass quirks. But I believe that we, yeah, we're we are too. Instead of living in the type of societies that we're living in now, create your own society. You know, yeah. create your own thing. You know, like learn how to actually tap into the that aspect of creation. Because right now we're just using our our powers to create to feed into a system because their values have been imprinted into your head. They have created these little clones called the masses. Mm-hmm. You know, the masses is generally their clones. Yeah, so I, they, I, they, I, 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 for some reason, the Agent Smith popping up into people's bodies in the Matrix, like that hasn't mm-hmm. hit me, like the metaphor of that hasn't hit me as hard as it has in these past couple weeks when I see like if I speak out when I say like a like a truth like a capital T capital F fact of say like of the president and they just like like they disappear bro like they they get that look in their eyes (laughs) where they just go into autopilot and you know they're the next five minutes is just going to be this story that they've heard and that they've regurgitated a million times in the past couple weeks it's like no gen no original thought no like conversation no dialogue of like let's find out what each other mean and like see if we can meet in the middle it's just like exactly turn into agent smith bro they're just like immediately boom they're a spokesperson for like the prop for their side whether left right black white man woman like gay straight doesn't matter it's it's all like it's it's fucking crazy exactly and like me and a friend were talking about because we, uh, me and my friend Khalid, we just did a live earlier tonight on his channel, talking, you know, decoding and breaking some stuff down. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, we were talking about because we had he has a friend in D.C. I mean, I have friends in D.C. Me and, too. Um, they were talking about three days ago. Um, shit was being blocked off in D.C. and they didn't know why shit was being blocked off, and it, it almost had and the videos that we saw on Instagram of it, it almost looked as if shit was getting ready to be staged. It so was what, a show of power, dude, is what it was. Like, what if the inauguration that you saw was just pre-recorded because certain people have been arrested? 
that type of thing. Is, is, do you think so, though? I've been hoping for some shit like that to happen for years, and I don't think it is. I don't think, I don't know, if, I don't think Trump's a good guy, man. I don't think the Q got it right this time. Or the well, it's not even about Q. Fuck Q is CIA. Fuck Q. Q is, <laughs> it's, not, it's not really about that. It's about, you know, there are people being brought to justice, but we may not experience it as a whole for the next few years. Why? I don't know why. That's just generally how these things work. Like you would have to infiltrate. You, you don't have feel to... like that's the carrot, though. There's more to it than that. Like on that level, it's kind of like you know, it's chess, making it's moves. Chess for sure. But I feel like at the same time, I get this this feeling that that people like you and I are being fed these carrots of that. The people are getting arrested right now. You just gotta wait a little longer. And I'm oh, like, I'm not, I'm not even saying like people just start, hey, start meditating, start fucking going for walks, start going to the beach more often, stop fucking watching super goddamn television. I'm not even saying, <laughs> I'm not even saying wait around. I'm just saying like, shit is happening. So uh-huh. you gotta keep your frequency high. For sure. You have to decode. Like, if you decode the what fucking happened at the Capitol a few weeks ago. Nancy Pelosi and all in in a whole bunch of other congressmen, their laptops are missing after that. You know, shit I like that. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and everybody, it's like, yeah, like why? It's like, like why would shit like that just be missing? Like, <laughs> you know, we know what's on it. So Mom's like, coming. I'm gonna leave my computer here. <laughs> it's like you know, it's almost like there are people that got smart. It's just like basically. Mother Earth is purging. So she's purging. Hey, Jahan all- Murdoch, you gotta be careful what words you're using in the chat room. <laughs> she's purging of all lower frequencies. And these beings that we believe to be being arrested are lower frequencies. They're trying to get to the, they're trying to do two things. Get, they're trying to find their way into a new level would say are being shut off from higher consciousness would call that you call that a newer dimension that energy is here Uh uh-huh so that's not going to work because their frequency is not going to match it they can't get through they can't tunnel through Uh they can portal through none of that shit so they will stay on a lower dimension Uh fucking ate up however long that that takes they will stay on a lower stasis that's uh-huh. everything. Is li- it's really just a spiritual war going on here that is coming to the physical. So it's coming out as. What role do humans play in that? I always think about this because when you say a spiritual war, I'm thinking. Humans play a lot of humans play a role as energy. A lot of people are just batteries because they don't know what's going on. The masses, you know, are batteries. Those are the humans. Used for any side. Yeah. Good or bad. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's a good because, fair. That's a good way of putting it. These people, <laughs> it's like when you know how to use energy and how to maneuver it and how to, you know, vamp on there's a lot of people that know how to vamp off people and uh-huh. use that energy for their own rise or manifestation, then that's what they will do. You know, that's what the nature of Archons is to vamp energy or soul force off of other people so that they can do what they need to do. Now these other people you know, these whatever these other beings, they're just really here to set balance. There really is no good or bad. It's really just about balancing things out because we're supposed to be creating our own our own thing here, you know? And yeah. learning. Some people are here to create their own little haven. Some people are here to learn certain things. So it's like Mother Earth balancing things out. So, you know, a lot of storms will be coming. A lot, you know, that's why Corona, you know, that's why uh, the the uh, fake thing is here. You know, fake a thing. lot, of, you know, the C-19 thing. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were saying there's another fake thing. I was like, wait, what? There's what, Corona 2.0? Another? <laughs> 2.5, 2.5. What's happening now? Have you the know, aliens come? Has Jesus returned? All of these things are happening and everybody is like, and very, very anxious, but I would, you know, very, very, you know, they're in pockets of anxiety. So I would say on a side note, you know, meditate, keep your frequency high, 
you know, uh, through you know, like physically take your elixirs, cleanse your body if necessary. Yeah. You, you know, integrate. You don't really have to do a specific diet like a lot of people like might tell you. Certain diets would be better for you. You know. I mean, use your better judgment. As I always yeah. tell people, like, what what do you you what do you feel you need? Call for veganism, then be a fucking vegan. Like, do you feel you know, like shit and you want to eat keto diet? Then do that. Like, you know, and that's like a physical, you know, physical things you could do. Murder you know, hornets. Keep your you know keep yourself plugged with water. You know, because water activates all everything inside of you, especially on the spiritual level. It activates the light body. That's why the uh, Egyptians. You know, built their pyramids on top of water because mm. it's you know electricity and water. Your body and your cells, water and electricity. You know, electricity runs through it. Electricity is in the air. You know, it activates the carbon inside of us, which is you know a form. You know, we all, everybody has some form of melanin within them, and it that is activated by water. Mm. So those are like physical things you can do, mental things like, you know, meditation, you know, affirmations, um, purging, you know, purging your fucking Instagram account and then bring and say you purge it of all that does not serve you. And then like bring in like one of my friends, I see his Instagram and he has integrated with like he really wants to travel and he's, you know, and different things like that. So he purged it and then now he only follows it, you know, like, like accounts that show these beautiful places on earth. And yeah, you know, nice. Perspective, you know, it, you know, that's feeding your mind because you're seeing it every day. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like purging your social media because you can have some people on there that have really dense energies that can affect you because. And they do not even can affect you. They will. If they you will. don't realize it on some level, you see if I could 20 posts that all have just 20 little tiny pushes against you like it's going to add up to a big fucking change in your reality you know what I mean? exactly and then you know like on the spiritual level you know um you know like read you know, and mental mental and spiritual like read more if you need to read more spiritual can also be like meditation or getting or finding a spiritual practice or ritual practice that you know will feed your you know whatever that spiritual Which level looks simple. like like a day yeah like rituals don't have to be crazy too man like just Going for a walk, listening to a pod, like your favorite podcast, mm -hmm. like while you're chilling at the beach. There's like finding that moment where you're just like, oh, this is fucking, this is it, like that, like just fucking cultivating that as often as you. Mm -hmm. Cultivating yourself as if you will be needed in some sort of way. To say you're not, mm -hmm. then you just attained a dope level that you never, you know, that you didn't have before. Mm -hmm. That would be beneficial to you, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, work work on your business. If you got one, if you're not, you know, work on your sovereign, your self sovereignty. Mm -hmm. You know what what does liberation look like to you? You know, mm -hmm. it's all it's all different to us, you know. And I just came across what uh, something uh, about national nationalization. Mm -hmm. So, being nationalized versus being an American citizen, there is a vast difference. You know, like being an American citizen, technically you are a slave to the corporation of America. Mm -hmm. But being nationalized, like, you know, say the National Guard were to come here, it were to start coming to people's doors like people think is going to happen. If you're nationalized, they can't do that. They got to leave you alone. You and your family. I'm nationalized. So being, I'm getting more information on that, but nationalized is like you become your own sovereign entity with in the corporation of america you become it's, independent yeah yeah versus being a citizen you are it's someone you are owned by this corporation or you work for this corporation mm -hmm. what that they call the united states of a well they call the usa or united states of america those I, are two different things but i'm learning yeah, more about just like your name is different capitalized than lower case. yeah that exactly. i've done some reading into that it's been a while but that's a that one's a is I'm like it's almost too good to be true. I'm like, does this really work? Like you really fucking like I saw some dude in the uh, talking to a judge. Like I would have been shot for saying some shit this dude. And he was like, I'm mean, the judge didn't say anything. It was like you're right. You're your, you're your own citizen or you, I yeah. Don't remember, but it was and, that, I was like, and that's because they know they they are trained on these things. They know, but they bank on you not knowing these things so they can you know 
they can send you away. It's like mm -hmm. the it's how the judicial system brought in the uh, the plea of guilty. Mm -hmm. The plea of guilty is to fill up is you know pleading guilty is going to fill up jail faster than you actually having an actual trial. Mm -hmm. You want to if you if you're in that position, you might you take that shit to. I don't care if you did or not. Take that shit to trial. You're probably gonna win based upon if you have this t sort of type of information of, you know, the judicial system, the court system on all levels, because the court system symbolizes Saturn. So you have to study those types of things and then bring it back down to Earth, you know, study law, asset protection is a big one, and things like that. Like, I just ordered a book called Asset Protection by David E. Uh, was it David E. Robertson? Mm -hmm. And he talks about all this type of stuff, you know, so it's we'll just have to cultivate we'll have to like basically kill off our lower self not like kill it off but like shed that skin starve it <laughs> it's like how reptiles shed their skin we have to shed this old skin and become this new being this lighter being you know building our light body you know becoming who we to we are told our ancestors used to be and then becoming greater than that and even if you don't do that in this life, but you started the process, that sticks around in your DNA, mm -hmm. and your bloodline will be more susceptible to that. Hopefully, you you trained your you know you got your kids on it, and they get their kids on it, and that's how you will break free of you know within your own bloodline of these things is by building up your DNA and imprinting these types of things within the DNA because it can be changed and it's mutable. You know, it's almost like how um, it's almost like, say, in your family, a th you have a thousand, you have a, a thousand years worth of slavery in there. There's going to be a lot of healing and you're going to have to do. But that is going you're going to be susceptible to those vibrations, probably, you know, those actions, those thoughts, because it's in the DNA. So if you clean, like, that's another thing we have to figure out our our history, our family, what's what runs in our DNA. And if we don't know, you can just like go and like, you know, light some candles or something or do a ritual where you uh, you cleanse all of your your lower ancestors, those that do not resonate with you with your bloodline anymore. And they will, have, they will have to go like some of us have ancestors who were murderers, killers, rapists, all that type sure. of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got to go. Yeah. Or they will continue to hold your bloodline down, those types of things, and you will you won't be able to get to that point where, you know, they said we were once great. You know? You have to build that back. It doesn't happen overnight, you know? You gotta it's generation after generation after generation. You gotta build it. That is like the essence of breaking generational curses. And you know, that's that whole pocket. But it's also preparing, you know, preparing for a future that may not come but if it does we'll be ready type of mentality for sure and in the meantime i'm i'm building a pyramid Dude, exactly I'm, that's on the bucket list you know fuck these fear fuck these pyramids over here i want to build my own well be for sure I'm, I'm dude i'm gonna do it so I'm gonna, <laughs> ricardo you saw the pyramids in ecuador have you seen you heard those pyramids in ecuador? they're bigger than the ones in egypt that's crazy but you know um you know the real egypt is actually we actually live in the real Egypt here in America. This what you realize in the original? Yeah, the, the, ori country? the original Egypt or Kim, the land of Kim, the land of black, uh -huh. is here in America. And what we learned about is the other version that is in Africa, named Egypt. That's crazy. That's when you get into like the more science and more in the history, you'll start to See, that's what I'm asking. Like, what book did you get that out of? I, um, uh, a good friend of mine who's into more science let uh -huh. me know about that, but he put me onto some books, so I'm going to ask him. And if I can get some book references, which I know I will, I'll shoot them to you in DM. Give me some good, like, more all history shit. Because, Maybe you know, like M O O R. Yeah, like we don't have to. M O R E. <laughs> like we don't have to fuck around to become, become nationalized as a more, but it's pertinent. It's, it's, it's very important that we learn their science and their ways because a lot of that shit that they implemented, we still use their methods today. 
for sure and you, you don't know, hear about them you have to do all your own digging for a civilization that had so much to offer the world tells you something you know what i mean that's like why 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 the fuck why is know, that weird? like we live in a very mason masonic slash freemasonic society that's their science mm. they're the ones who came up with that shit the europeans learned from them and then built a whole society around it around their knowledge like curious what do you, like what do you think is in the fucking vatican <laughs> I don't know. Let me inside. <laughs> I, can, I don't know. I can presume to know, but I have no fucking clue. For real. But I want to go. I want to see what's in there. It's like, uh, I'm just checking the chat. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's start wrapping it up with questions because I'm getting tired as fuck. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? Uh, Sarah Ramon says, write your own hieroglyphs. Cronus was, yeah, Cronus was a title. There you go, Sarah. That's the type of shit we need to get into, you know, like writing our own hieroglyphs, studying dead languages. I want to learn a dead language just for the hell of it. Savage. You learn a, you learn a fucking dead language, and then you can break into a whole form of history that. Dude, like, other. I'd be down to learn Latin. Because it's almost like we watch all these documentaries and ancient aliens and all this shit, and all these people who were said to. Um, discover or find, not even discover but find these things what if we what if we took it into our own hands to find these things that, that which are hidden mm -hmm. just by doing you know just by studying a, day, a dead language and mastering it like we're no longer relying on the, the outward information we're you know we're doing we're you're cutting out the middleman yeah basically using our masculine energy to cut the middleman out so what language are you learning? Uh, I'm not learning any right now, but I want to. I want to. I want to study like a. What would like it a, be? I would say not not Mayan, but uh, damn, who are the Mayans connected to? Olmec. I want to learn more about the Olmec and their language. Uh huh. Uh huh. And the language uh, of you're the going New World native on me, eh? Yeah, and uh, the language of the old Americas. Uh huh. You know the the languages that were spoken here thousands of years ago. I want to learn about America and what was really here before, you know, like a lot of the Native Americans that we know today are Native, aren't the real Native Americans. There, there were Native people here way before that. Yeah, they got some crazy, you, they're talking about the tall, white-skinned, red-headed giants that the Natives talk about killing in the caves. You ever read about that? No. See, it's like... Dude, a number of different tribes in the south in the southwest U.S. They talk about this this group of pale skinned redheaded giants that they would fucking they would come out of the caves in the earth. Um, That's wild. They were finding this. The Smithsonian was finding and covering up giant bones. Um, this dude was mobbing the, the Amazon River and stumbled into a cave that opened into it wasn't even a cave. He was like, there, there were steps, but there were steps that looked like they were built for giants. They're massive fucking steps. And he goes in, he's like, there's a huge cavern inside. Egyptian artifacts and mummies and um, hieroglyphics and Buddha statues. Specifically, you saw Buddha, the, the Buddha and um they're all in this cave inside of when you can't go there of course it's blocked off they say it's too dangerous and yeah no, i wonder why they say there's that. people take pictures like this is the cave entrance but like they got that shit on lock you can't go in there exactly like i want to know more about antarctica you know what's over there why we can't like why we literally can't travel to antarctica yeah give it a shot dude you just need money you gotta you gotta you gotta capitalize on some of this latent energy from the population and catapult <laughs> yourself to fucking Antarctica. But remote with view, you, I'm down. But we can actually do that. Like I've heard people try to remote view, try to get in there, but they're and they found like there's some fucked up shit over there. And guy like, has got some some really cool stories yeah. on people and their experiences slash information on antarctica and what's going on there etc etc you ever watch oh, gaia yeah. um i haven't been on gaia uh, I but tried. I, I what's up 
I used to be on Forbidden Knowledge TV, you know, uh, Billy Carson's platform. How do you like that? Uh, it was pretty dope. It's a lot of, lot of, lot of good content on there. There's right. like more, more content than you can fucking think of consuming in <laughs> ten years. Damn. And it's quality because Gaia was get was rubbing me in like the super cheesy kind of way, and I saw. It, yeah, that. it's really quality. It's like he takes a lot of different content uh, from all. Of, it's kind of like because Billy Carson used to have a show on Gaia, so he got. I pretty much think he got the template from when he was there. You know? Yeah. And you know, it's kind of his version, like a conscious Netflix. But you know, yeah. it, that's a really good place for the beginners to start because there's so much there. And then there are certain people that uh like they have YouTube platforms. Like they have shows on there. They're teaching people like uh, financial, uh, well, you know, financial wellness, uh, you know, healthy cooking, all that type of stuff. I haven't been on there in a while, but you know, when I when I was on there, it was pretty dope. I gotta find some good old fashioned books, man. Like it's hard, yeah. even like with my YouTube channel. Like all YouTube channels and this TV, it's almost like there's just fucking information. And it was overlooked. I can't fucking keep up with it. And like, and that's why, like, with the information, you just got to go where you're pulled. You know, you got to go where. Too fair, but the, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why I'm asking on more stuff. Like, I could type it into YouTube and get like 50 million yeah. videos with like all of them have 90 percent of the same information, and then 10 percent have the gems that I have to sift through. Whereas yeah. I feel like. If I had a book on this shit, they could just like, oh, here's the gold mine from cover to cover kind of thing. But even with books, it's kind of like that too. It's like you might get a book that has the gems are in the middle of the book, or it's like Man. two or three pages. It's a 300 uh-huh. page book with three pages of gems, but you needed to read those three pages. And you, you know, it's so it can be like that, but it's just yeah. like this is where manifestation comes in. It's like, you can manifest that and you know if you you know you know what you're doing you know you know write that down as a manifestation that you want to manifest that type of information this you know in this specific way but not like this type of specific information but you know say you're you know leave it open to how it comes to you you know Uh, uh, type of thing that's where that comes in consciously you know instead of like well fuck yeah, no, that's a good point. That's that's definitely something you can you can manifest too. All right, right. question uh, is: uh, Do you believe Earth flat or globe? The Earth is hollow. I believe the Earth is hollow. That's my that's my theory. I'm going conspiracy theory. I'm going with. <laughs> I believe, you know, whatever you believe to be real. That's where. We're <laughs> Great. All right. So <laughs> the real cowboys. The real cowboys are the vaqueros of Mexico. I'm sure that's not who you're getting at, but <laughs> <laughs> shout out to La Raza because I got Garcia, man. I gotta, I gotta hold it down for the homies. Oh yeah, my brother-in-law's last name is Garcia. Oh nice. There was a lot of us, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, at, there's a lot of us. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> uh, we could be related. YouTube has been more and more diluted, or is it just me? Yeah, but there's also yeah. a lot of people joining YouTube. I'm not, I wouldn't say that's like a co- sort of conspiracy thing. It's just like it's the nature of the beast, man. There's a lot more information out there. We, we got this. That's why the TV services are good. That's what we're, exactly what we're just talking about. It's it's good to have that direct source. Yeah, it's good to have the plug. <laughs> that have done the work, you know. So like, here it is now. Sift through the bullshit and see what you find. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's here. Just go where you're called. You know. Yeah. Get your spiritual tools, whatever that it looks like for you. You know. Your that's why I direct people to Kabbalion all the time, dude. That's like, yeah. that's like your my spiritual fucking. Batman belt, my utility belt. That's like what I access for <laughs> everything ever, period, at this point. It's just concise. It's to the point. It's not wishy-washy. It's like makes perfect got, sense, start to finish. I got some books over here uh, damn, that might be good for people. So It was your favorite one. I'm at 12% on my laptop, so if it cuts out, that's okay. why, folks. But let's get the let's get your number one book recommendation. We got this right here. Uh, Cavalian, I already mentioned that one. What's your next one? My next one will be um this one right here it is made major drops earth what 
it's called Earth, the Palladian Keys to the Living Library. There's also an, if you type this in on YouTube, they have an audio book that has all the 20 parts. Earth, the Palladian. The Palladian Keys to the Living Library. Uh, creating Good magical, you guys. Creating magical. I expect entities. you guys to have this book, book read by next Wednesday. I, I mean, need a 2,500 word essay on my desk no later than yeah, 9 a.m. Exactly. They, um, there is an audio book, like <laughs> a, a two-hour audio book on YouTube. What's up? Uh, the Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot. There's Then there's a Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot. Uh-huh. Uh, creating Magical Entities. Of, oh, Psychic Protection, Psychic Self-Defense. Ooh, there you go. By Dion Fortune. Like I, I have a bunch, and there's this uh, Exploring Atlantis by Dr. Frank Alper. This is part three. There's it's, This is a three-part series. Creating magical entities seems fun. Hell yeah, it is, Ricardo. It is. I mean, we do it, we do it already. It just teaches you how to, how that we do it, and then how to do it in another way to help you, you know? Because it's like this. Okay, if you have everybody in the world praying to Jesus, okay, or praying to a certain entity, it's like, there, it's like the entity is like a steak and everybody's eating off that or even let's think about this in smokers terms you have one joint and there's 10 people are you going to get high <laughs> you that's know? how you think it works that's that it's because it's energy you know and this energy is being muddled down by so many people calling on it you could just as easily say that energy is infinite and you just tap into the source and you'll never run out as long as if, yeah, if it's not like it's out. not like running out but it, it's infinite but it loses its power over time because so much so it is infinite but it loses punch so that's why a lot of people they go to uh they 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 find other entities that aren't really as venerated or they create their own consciously that will work mm. exactly for them and creating your own entity means that you have nobody you utilizing this energy but you yeah so it's gonna work better more than likely you know you can create your own pantheon just like there's greek pantheon egyptian pantheon the sumerian god you create your own shit i have a whole pantheon yeah, for so the egyptian pantheon's gotta be pretty taxed at this point yeah there's <laughs> certain things that there's certain there's you know they're, yeah pretty tapped but there are certain certain gods and goddesses within egypt and you study them that aren't being venerated like that like the older pre-dynastic gods and goddesses or the titans uh you know mm -hmm. shit there's a bunch if you just do your homework but you know atlas <laughs> <laughs> But you know, right. my computer is about to die, but I got eight percent. You want to? Right. You want to speak now or forever hold your peace on something? Uh, well, guys, uh, have an Etsy shop. You got, you know, get all your spiritual needs. Uh, I'll, I'll put it all down. All your spiritual needs, or yeah. just some of them? <laughs> Not all your <laughs> spiritual needs. I'll put it in the chat. Uh, right here. Because I'll take a bottle of whatever is going to make me blast into the astral realm ninety, at least ninety percent of the time. My hermetic elixir will do that. In my uh, emerald elixir, will do that for you. Ninety percent of the time, I will astral project. Um, let me put it to you like this: it, you're going to have to do some work too. You're, That's what I'm saying. Help. If you have if you have something where I'm just blasting off like a shot of tequila is going to get me feeling real nice, an elixir that's going to get me in the astral. Yeah, if you use it in tandem with mentalism, hell yeah. Copy. Confidence. You got it. Copy. Okay, sweet. You dropped, <laughs> your, you dropped your Etsy shop. I don't want to do any work. That's what I'm getting at, Joseph. Well, I don't know then. I you know, want to you... call it. I want to call a duty. <laughs> I want to call a duty and ask to project. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're kind of fucked at this point. You're maybe uh, you just uh. Shit, say just keep saying it, see what happens. I, ask <laughs> I just that is my mentalism. I just mentalism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw that out there. All right, everyone. Um, so Alchemy, thanks. Check out his shop. I've got, I've got his. I've been out of your gold for a while. He's got a bunch of um, um, colloidal mm -hmm. metals, gold, yep. silver, iridium, and a handful of other things. They do a handful of 
magical yep. shit. Um, we can't. I, just, uh, I got right more. Now. I got some more gold wire coming in soon, so I kind of need to take my gold, uh, the listing down for a second. All you need to do is go panning for gold and start catching your own gold from the mountains, so it's got some extra fucking kick. Charge three, three times <laughs> so much per bottle. That would be fucking great. That would be, be amazing. That'd be awesome. I'd be super fucking. I'd be super stoked to do that. You just catch your own gold for your for your flexors, dude. It's out there. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, I got some gold wire coming, so I'll be able to that shit's all over the place out here. Make some more gold, I'll be able to make some more gold here soon. So I just I just packaged up the last of it, the last bottle today. Uh, th that's what I was doing earlier before I get, jumped on the live. So once my gold wire comes in, get some more uh, get some more distilled water, and I'll be uh, making some more gold. I'm good on everything else. I got they want, us to, they want us to talk about Babylon. His it computer was, might die before. More we get older it. and advanced than Egypt. I don't know if it was more advanced than Egypt, but it's certainly older. Certainly older, certainly older. I believe they are all. Every society of every advanced society has their strength. Like you could build. Let's do. Let's do a video. Let's let's plan a video. I'll do some research. We'll get some yeah. topics. We'll talk about Babylon and Sumeria and Assyria and the Teutons. We'll talk about all of them for you. All right. For real, we'll do it. I do love. I'd love that shit too. You're right. We don't talk about that enough. So that'll be the next video. Thanks for chilling, everyone. Thanks for coming on, dude. It's probably almost four o'clock in the morning over there. Right? Uh, it's three thirty-one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I'll, I'll I'll keep you posted. All right. Thank you. All right. Peace out and good night, everybody.